In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix disapproved products in Google Merchant Center. Let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so you're having problems with Google Merchant Center and getting your products approved. So it's really important to keep in mind how Merchant Center actually works and why it even exists. So with regular ads in Google search, you write your ad and then boom, you can put it right onto the search results and start paying for, for clicks right away. There's no, there's no pause there. With Google Shopping Ads, it's really important for Google to maintain the integrity of their search listings. So they have a review process for Google Shopping products to make sure that everything looks good on Google Shopping. This means that instead of just creating your products on Google Shopping or creating your Google Shopping ads, you need to create a Google Merchant Center account, get your feed uploaded into Merchant Center or connect it in with Shopify or WooCommerce or whatever you're using, and then make sure it's all approved before the connection and that those products will go into Google Ads and then live on the Google Shopping network. So to get your Google Shopping Ads live, you need to create a Google Merchant Center account, get your feed input into Merchant Center, get it all approved in Merchant Center, all those products, all the information before Google will let you show those ads on Google Ads and the search results. And it's a real pain in the butt to get them approved at the start, especially when you're starting out because you're just learning how this whole thing works, how all the systems connect together, and maybe you're running into problems here where things are getting disapproved and you don't know why. I'm going to show you what I do to get products approved quickly and even how I call Google to talk to them myself. A pro tip before you get started is that even if your products are being disapproved, sometimes it's not all products. Yes, sometimes that happens, but sometimes it's only a few products in your feed that are getting disapproved. I recommend starting your Google Shopping campaign anyway so that those products that are approved can start showing and you can get data for those products. This is really important because you don't want to be waiting to start your whole campaign just for a few products to get approved when some products can start getting data, clicks, impressions, conversion data uh, right away. So while we're working on the feed, some products are still churning away, getting that conversion data and starting to get you sales for your e-commerce store. So even though there are common reasons for product disapprovals, what's really important here is for you to learn how to think like a marketer, think like a problem solver on this occasion, because hopefully this won't be your last store. You'll keep making more stores and you'll have to go through this process with every new store that you get onto Google Shopping ads. There are a lot of reasons why products get disapproved, but what's even more important is that, is that you go through a process of troubleshooting and problem solving with your feed. Google's gonna give you your error or warning or whatever um, diagnostic knowledge that it can give you and you need to use that to figure out, okay, what is actually the problem here? So you can actually download the data as well. It will show you the, the actual warnings and errors for each product. What you wanna do there is look at that and go, okay, what's the problem here? How can I fix this? And what I really recommend doing is going to Google and Googling the error, seeing what other people have done. There are lots of forums out there. Yes, I can give you a list of problems and I'm gonna do that in a moment. But if you can learn how to do this, because you might have some errors that only a few people have ever had, and there's someone probably talking about it on some forums, and so then you can solve that really quickly, and you'll know for next time, with the way that you set up your store, how to stop those problems happening again and again. If you understand this process, it's just gonna make you a much better marketer, e-commerce marketer, and it's gonna make things much easier as you keep going. Something that's gonna help a lot is that you don't have to wait till tomorrow before you can actually see if, if the changes that you made to your feed actually approved the products or Google approved those products. What you can do is just go in to the products and refetch the feed. I'll show you right now on the screen. Go in, refetch the feed, wait just, it only takes a few minutes, three to five minutes or so, and refresh, and you'll see that Google has likely just approve the product or given you some sort of other error that you need to work through. Just keep doing this process. Google, like see the error, Google, uh, find a solution, make changes, refetch, refetch, keep doing this. Again, refetch, change, refetch, change, refetch. And through this process, you start clearing all those errors and all your products will be approved. And that's when you know that then within 24 to 48 hours, those products are gonna be shown on Google Shopping as long as you've set up your Google Shopping campaign in Google Ads. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually call Google and speak to their shopping team and they can help you get your products approved. Now this can be amazing when you're stuck, you don't know what the problem is and it keeps getting disapproved and you don't know where, where to solve it. Well, they often have extra information and knowledge about your exact problem. And I've done this a couple of times when I've been absolutely stuck, when it's not giving me enough information about why something isn't being approved and I've called the number and they've just said, yep, here it is on my system. I can see the problem. 
go and fix this. And boom, I was able to fix it and saved me a lot of pain. Now, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a page that has a lot of the contact numbers for all the different countries for Google. And you can even call one in a different country if it's in the same time, if it's open in the time zone. So say if you're working late at night because you work during the day at your job and then you work in your e-com store at night, you can call another one that's in Australia, UK, wherever, um, that's on a different time zone. And this can be really helpful to get your products approved really quickly. So that's what I recommend, that's a good tip. Okay, now I'm gonna go over some really common errors you might be having in your merchant center one incorrect product availability okay this is caused because in your feed it's saying in stock but then on your website it's out of stock so there's a mismatch here between what your feed is saying and what your site is saying this might occur because you've got a google sheets feed or your your feed in woocommerce or shopify isn't actually feeding in the correct information into Merchant Center. So the cool thing is that Merchant Center sometimes will actually update this automatically in your feed, but I do recommend that you have some sort of dynamic feed that does update this automatically, just so that you don't have any problems where Google might I don't know, penalize you for that, or it might show that it's in stock and you'll be paying for clicks even though it's out of stock. So that's something that's really, really important and it's really easy to fix. In the short term, you can fix this really quickly by just changing the feed so it says out of stock for those items. And if you're regularly checking your Merchant Center disapprovals, you can just change this really, really quickly as it happens, but I do recommend that dynamic feed. Number two is invalid images. This can be caused by things such as a low resolution image, uh, the image isn't in the right format, or the URL that you put in for your image link isn't actually an image. Maybe the uh, image is actually not up to the standards that Google has, and they do have pretty strict standards for that. What I would recommend doing is downloading all the product data. It'll actually have a diagnostics that you can download in Merchant Center, seeing which products have this error, and then going in and checking your feed and seeing the image URL that you have for that product, putting it into the search bar, and then seeing, is it actually an image? For example, sometimes Shopify actually puts in a little string at the end of the URL for shopping images. Uh, what I recommend is leaving that out so it just gets the only, just the image and there's no query or anything else um, after that, that URL and trying that as the actual URL for the image. If that image isn't working, I recommend using a different image or uploading a new image. And in Shopify, you can do this by going to um, admin slash files. I'll put a, a link on the screen right now, but you can go to that link, upload a new image and copy the URL there and use that instead. So it doesn't have to be an image that's on your product page. This is a cool little tip too. Mistake number three is incorrect price. This is when your feed pricing doesn't match the pricing that's on your website. And as well, Google will sometimes auto update this, but it's much better to actually have this live, have a dynamic feed that updates. And if you are using a static feed like Google Sheets, make sure that when you update your website pricing, you remember to update the feed as well in Google Sheets. It's really simple. Just update the pricing and try again, refetch. Problem number four is the incorrect landing page URL. Okay, this is pretty simple. It just means that whatever page that you've got set as the product link, the actual landing page they go to isn't a isn't the right page. Maybe you put the wrong product page in there for a different product. Maybe it's a 404 page. Maybe the product is actually unpublished or unavailable in your e-commerce platform. And so when Google tries to crawl it, they're not getting the data that they need. It doesn't match the feed. So go and just check your feed, see the URL you have there, and even try it in incognito window or some sort of other computer or somewhere else that you're not logged into your platform to see can Google actually access that page. If you're still having problems, you can also clone the product or create a new product page and then fill in the information again and see if that works. Maybe it was a problem with that certain page, who knows? Keep trying stuff like that and see if that can work. Problem number five, and this is really frustrating problem, is problems with your MPN or GTIN. Okay, so what are these? MPN and GTIN, they are used in conjunction with your brand and it gives Google a better idea of what your product actually is. It's, it's basically an identifying number for your product. So someone else might have another store that sells the same products. Maybe they're your own, you have your own products, but a lot of people sell someone else's products. Um, maybe for example, cameras. And if you put the GTIN of that camera, that's the official GTIN, it means Google has seen this product advertised all around the world and it has a much better idea of what that product is. That's gonna make its job much easier to figure out who's actually searching for your products and getting those initial clicks. If you don't put this information in, that's fine. You can actually get a custom GTIN or just put in the MPN with the brand, that can work too. But Google will say here what the actual problem is. And this is a really common problem, especially for new users of Merchant Center and Google Shopping Ads. You just need to update that GTIN. I would recommend starting off MPN, which you can have any, you can even put the SKU in there if you like, try that out and put your brand name in there just so that you can get it approved and get those ads going. What I do recommend is eventually getting a GTIN for yourself. 
that's really important. If you actually can get the GTA in of the actual product, see if it is a camera or it's a phone or whatever you're selling, that's gonna help as well, as well in another way because it means that if there are any reviews around the world from other shopping stores that have that same product GTIN, it's also gonna show on your ads. The disadvantage here though, and I've seen this with some of our clients, is that if you have got an amazing brand and you're using the GTIN of a product, but other stores, they can actually kind of hijack those reviews. So you've spent all this time getting great reviews, well, a competitor can then show that same product. They might not have a strong brand, but then Google Shopping is gonna show the reviews for that product for your, your reviews, but because it's the same product, Google's like, okay, well, we're gonna show those reviews anyway because it's, it's the same product. Okay, there's a lot to get into here. It deserves its own video, but for GTIN and MPN, problems, I'm gonna put a link in the description to a Google page that talks a bit more about this question here as well. So check the description box for that, for that link. Okay, problem number six is missing shipping or tax information. This is super common, but it's a very straightforward fix. It just means going into your shipping settings in Merchant Center and your tax settings, your business settings, and make sure that's up to date, accurate, and reflects what's actually on your store. Keep in mind that sometimes if you put shipping information in your product feed, that's actually gonna override the Merchant Center settings that you put in your shipping settings in Merchant Center. All you really have to do is just make sure that your shipping settings match what you're actually shipping. That's really, really important. If you're having shipping differences between each product, put them in the feed, but just make sure that they're accurate. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video that I did on shipping settings and getting them all set up. So hit the description, go check it out if you wanna see how to set that up properly as well. Error number seven is prohibited or restricted products. Okay, you probably know this already, but Google has very strict restrictions on products that it deems dangerous or unacceptable or anything like that. They get very careful about sensitive topics which you know, I understand, um, but it's something you need to be aware of if you're going into that realm. Products like guns, bombs, explosives, drugs, anything like that, just that you can't really advertise that stuff on Google Shopping. And if you do, even if it's something like alcohol, there's a lot of policies around that you need to be aware of. I'll put a link to a list of dangerous products and services in the description, check that out. It'll have a bit more information from Google about those sort of services. If you are trying to get illegal drugs approved on Google Merchant Center, I would stop reconsider your life choices and pick another niche for your e-commerce store. Okay, now that we've got all our products approved in Merchant Center, I really recommend that you check Merchant Center at least once per week. Set a time in your calendar where you just jump in for two minutes and make sure that everything is approved. Google will often email you if your products get disapproved, but I, I see that a lot of times this email gets missed or they don't send it, so just keep this in your calendar and just check this because if those products go down, if they get disapproved on Merchant Center, your ads stop for that product and if it's generating a lot of revenue, boom, sales will stop from, from Google Shopping, you'll lose those sales and there's no, you know, you don't need to do that. You just need to check and make sure that, that that stuff doesn't get disapproved. Okay, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments and I'll respond and answer them the best I can. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.